Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Today we're going to cover a really simple method of painting cavalry. Now I've chosen to do a brown horse and I've got some notes here you'll see as well on black horses too because these are a little bit more general. You're going to see these in a lot of games whether it be old skirmish games like perhaps you're still playing uh, Mordheim for example or these you know massed cavalry charges of French curasseurs if you're playing something like black powder. Now this one comes to us courtesy of uh, Klaus, very generous donation, and he wanted to see how I would tackle horses for the gaming table. So this is not a particularly precise method, but I think it looks pretty cool. And once we've got the rider up on there tomorrow, you know, we're going to see how that can really work on the table. Now this is going to be part one of a two-part uh, series, let's say, because <laughs> tomorrow I want to do the curiouser specifically. So, without any more fussing around, let's get a look at how I've started this fella off, and we'll get a look at some black horse tips as well. Now, to paint the horses themselves takes an absolute minimum of effort, okay? We're really going to use only one or two colours on each of them. Now, how are we going to achieve that? I've gone ahead and I've sprayed them both black, and that's where we're going to start from. For the black horse, that's most of the work done. What we'll then do is overbrush some dark reaper. Now I've chosen Dark Reaper for its slight blue tone, and that might sound a little peculiar, but if you've ever, you know, met a horse, <laughs> or come across a really well-groomed black horse, in reality, you'll see that when the light hits them just right, to, to my eyes at least, they tend to have this little bit of a bluey sheen to them, and it's stunning, you know, so I'm going to try and replicate that with Dark Reaper as the highlight for this black. We'll then hit it with some dark tone, and then any sort of spot highlights we want to do, we'll go back and use Dark Reaper again. And we're going to tackle the brown horse in a very similar way. We'll start off by painting them all over with Mornfang Brown, then we'll do our overbrush with Scrag Brown. This is quite an orangey sort of difference, but once we hit it with the wash, you'll see it calms down quite a bit. It'll work well for those sort of bay horses, I think. Then we'll go ahead and we'll highlight again with a little bit of Scrag Brown, just any of those points we want to really bring up. So because it's the easiest to show off, we'll start off with the Black Horse and we'll get our Dark Reaper out. Now for this, I'm going to be using one of these really cheap brushes. Uh, this one cost me €1.45, so you're looking at about $2. It is a cheap, nasty synthetic, which when it's finished, you know, you just toss it out. But I'm going to use it because it's got fairly soft bristles, but they keep a nice point. You can hear how hot it is. <laughs> What we're going to do, similar to dry brushing, is get a little bit of Dark Reaper on our brush and we're going to try and just brush along areas where we want that slight bluey sheen to catch. Okay, so to demonstrate, just with dry brushing, you don't want very much on your paint, sorry, very much on your brush at any one time. Then what we're going to do is just lightly drag this along like that. And you'll see it goes on a little patchy at first. But we're going to just go back and build it up lightly. Okay, you don't want much paint at a time. But you do want enough that it's going to catch. And rather than just doing the extreme edges, okay, it is going to go over, you know, broader parts of the flanks and what have you. So I'm going to go around now and I'm going to Dark Reaper this whole black horse. It's going to look awful. All right, I'll be honest with you. When you're putting this on, it will... It will not look great, but as always, hold the faith, we're going to fix it up, it will look cool when we're done. Now that looks, ooh, <laughs> we've gone ahead and we've got a blue horse, but you'll see quite well that it has sort of brought out all of the high points while leaving that nice dark black in all of the recesses. And that's ideally what we want to stick to. Now I want to briefly touch on the difference here between Nuln Oil and Dark Tone, or the Citadel Shades and the Army Painter washes, okay? A lot of people will tell you that these are the same thing, and they are absolutely not. They're very similar in color, like, you know, color-wise they're almost identical, they are so close it might as well be pointless, but there is a reason why I'm going to use Quick Shade rather than the shades here. Reason being, these dark tone washes, or well, all of the Army Painter washes, work more like a stain. They will flow into the recesses of the model and give us that nice deep shading that we want, but they'll also bring down the color over the whole model too. So you'll get 
like I said, more of a stain effect. Whereas with the shades, they tend to run off and not, uh, let's say, discolor the main color quite as much. These go more for the recesses, whereas this is going to give us an all-over uh, shading effect and bring down the recesses too. So that's the reason I'm going to use dark tone. All right. What we'll do now then is now that that's dried, let's go ahead and pop some of this on. We've got our lovely blue horse, and I'm actually going to use the same flat brush I was using earlier. I've made sure I've rinsed it out properly. And all we're going to do is just coat the whole model. Doesn't matter if you haven't painted his equipment yet. You know, we're going to get back to that and do that anyway. But let's just go around and bucket this all over, especially those blue areas. <laughs> okay, so we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll see what that looks like once that's dried. Now, while that's doing its thing, we can grab our Mournfang Brown. And again, same brush. I should probably use a smaller one, but eh, what am I going to do? Um, and now just start painting in all of this horse. Uh, you know, I am going to swap down to a smaller brush for most of this, I think. It doesn't matter too much if you're going to get it on as equipment, because we are going to paint all of that anyway. But let's just go around and make him brown. This will probably take a couple of coats. So now that our horse is brown, I'm going to go over with some Scrag Brown in exactly the same way we did with the Dark Reaper earlier, in that I don't want a huge amount of it on my brush, but it's not really true dry brushing. So let's just see what we get on the edge of the old, yeah, that ought to do it, and lightly start following along all of those really pronounced edges. So like I said, this will be exactly the same as with the, the Black and the Dark Reaper, so just Take a second here and go around the whole model. Oh, bap the camera a couple of times. <laughs> and spilled up that lighter brown to give us some shading. And then in much the same way as the other one, once it's had a few minutes to set, we've got our dark tone and we'll start blatting this all over the model. Now once I've had plenty of time to dry, this is what we've got from the brown horse. And you can see I might have used a strong tone or something similar to Agrax Earthshade instead get a slightly warmer brown but i kind of like how this one turned out if i'm honest so get a look at the other side there and we can see we've got all that shading but the uh, the color itself is still intact so bonus and then let's get a look at our black horse and again we can see there's that little bit of the original sort of blue showing through but not so much that it glows like a blue horse um, i think that's quite cool now the tricky part comes from how are we gonna how are we gonna highlight these things? And this is what's been doing my head in because give me tanks, give me body armor, give me nice hard edges to highlight. You give me a horse, and how do we how are we gonna highlight these things? All these round edges. So we've been grappling with this for a while. We'll start off with our brown horse, and what we're gonna do is dry brush it again with that scrag brown. Okay, this time though, you can probably hear me reaching for a brush. This time though, we're going to use an actual dry brush. This is one of Citadel's medium dry brushes. And let's just get that there and prep your brush up as you normally would. And you want next to nothing left. Okay, so you really want to be just leaving behind a dust of this stuff. And we'll start on his butt because that's the easiest place to to show it off. So what I'm doing is really lightly going back over a few times and you'll see it doesn't make much difference at first. Really what I'm doing is just bringing that warmth back to the color. Actually on his neck is probably a good place to demonstrate this. So let's start here and just lightly you'll see along the bigger areas of his neck where that musculature is. Let's do on his face too. We're just reintroducing the warmth to that color. Okay, so I'm going to go around the whole horse now. I'm going to do that just really lightly blasting on some of that. And then we'll do the same thing with our black horse and just a fraction of that Dark Reaper. Then the same thing with our Dark Reaper on this horse. And again, almost nothing on your brush. You want to be leaving behind just a dust. All we're looking to do is just put on a little bit of that blue on the extreme edges of his detail. So wherever those, uh, you know, like his knees, the edges of his face, 
just enough to brighten it up a little and introduce that third tone again. So after the second dry brush of Dark Reaper, there's what we've got for our black horse. Might not look the smoothest, and part of that honestly is the weather at the moment. It is an absolute sod. Um, the heat is not any good for, you know, what I'm trying to do here, unfortunately, but that'll work out all right once we put a varnish over the top. You may have seen how much of a difference that makes to the sort of smoothness of a finish. And for comparison, here is our brown horse. And he's looking pretty good too. What I'm going to do now is all of his equipment, and I'm going to concentrate on the brown horse for this one. We'll start off with just a couple of things, and I'll bring those paints out now. So first of all, for all of the blue cloth, we're going to use Cantor Blue, same as we did on the infantry themselves. Then any white details, we're going to base coat those with Celestra Grey over the top of the blue. That makes it nice and easy. We're going to do the sheepskin in Rakarth Flesh, and any, say, reins and what have you, we'll do those in black. Any little bits of extra detail, so along his uh, the edges of the sheepskin, where there's like these tassels and what have you, we'll do those in red. But it's actually an incredibly limited palette, so we'll get on to that now. So starting out with just a little bit of water in my Cantor Blue, I'm going to go over these bits here. You see this is quite wet at the moment, so I've probably got a little bit too much water in, but we can let that dry and come do a second coat. Then same two this cartridge box, and we'll do the cloth at the same time in the same colour. Now once your Cantor Blue is dried and you get a nice solid base coat there, you can move on to your Celestra Grey for all the white areas. Now, I want to briefly touch on this sort of rolled pack thing he's got on his back here. The box underneath is his cartridges, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Again, my research is probably a little lacking compared to some people in the area, but this folded sheet he's got across the back in artwork and contemporary you know, pictures and what have you, I've seen it done one of two ways. Either it's sort of a beige with a, a red flap, in which case rack out flesh and my fist on red will see you right. But I've also seen it done the same blue and white as a cartridge box. And because we're looking at easy ways to do this, that's how I'm going to do it. So with a little bit of white, sorry, Celestial Grey rather, we're going to go around and start base coating these white areas. You probably do with a little bit more water in there. But this is none too difficult. Just cruise around in any of these bits that you want to be white. Get in there now. And then once you've done that first stage of white, what you want to get out is Rekarth Flesh, and we're going to do the sheepskin. Now I recommend a nice, short, stiff, bristled brush. Uh, something that's not going to sort of splay out too much as you're doing it, because you don't want to hit parts of the horse you've already painted. Uh, but all you need to make sure is you're getting into all the little crevices on the sheepskin itself. And this will probably only take one coat, but again, you know, <laughs> I trust you guys by now to decide for yourselves whether or not you want to go back over. Now you'll probably find with the sheepskin that it's almost impossible to get into all of the little cracks and crevices, but don't worry too much because it'll look like natural shading. So with my, my fist on red, let's get in and we'll do the little tassels around the edge of his sheepskin. And don't forget that they are up around the front here too. This bit takes a little bit of time because it is kind of fiddly, but don't worry too much. It's easy, just time consuming. So now with most of those details done, I want to add some shading. And this time I'm going to use Nuln Oil. I'm going to go for it this time for all of the reasons that I used a dark tone the first time around, and that I don't want to stain these colors. I really just want the recesses to get a little bit of shading, nice and simple. So this is the reason why we're going to do this before we go ahead and paint all the black uh, reins and leather and what have you in, because this is going to get a little bit messy in a minute. <laughs> so all it is, just a bit on your brush. You could swap to a darker brown if you fancied, but this is going to work fine for our purposes. Just go around now and fill in all these areas with a little bit of Nuln Oil. Now after that wash is dried, you'll see all the shading that's in there. This took about 10 minutes because it's way too hot already. <laughs> Normally I'd leave these though for about 30 minutes for that shade to dry. What I've got now is again, one of these little cheek brushes. I keep coming back to these because they're so useful. And I've got quite a small one here. Again, flat tip because I'm gonna use it for dry brushing. What I'm going to use is a little bit of rack white. Now this is 
just off-white actually and it's got a little bit of a peachy tone to it so I'm going to use this to bring out some of the detail on that sheepskin again so with just a little on my brush it doesn't matter really if you've got kind of too much for this because we can be quite precise where it's going with a brush this size you just want to go over and lightly bring up that detail on the sheepskin again Nice and simple, you see? And like I said, you can be fairly precise. But this is the reason why we haven't painted the, the black in yet, because you're still going to end up going over some of this. But what I'll do now is just finish this off, and then we'll come back and do a couple of other highlights. So now I've got my Ulthuan Grey and Evil Sun Scarlet for the red and the white. Now I'm not going to be too precise about how this goes on. This is really just to demonstrate. But as always, instead of going to a pure white, I like to stay just a little step down so it looks a wee bit more natural. As you can see going on it still looks like it is white but once that dries it'll still have a little bit of sort of a natural shade to it. So I'm going to do this white in and then I'll do the red in the same manner with my Evil Sun Scarlet. So we'll come back and see what that looks like when I'm finished. Then you can grab yourself just a little bit of McCrag Blue and start highlighting the blue itself. Now I would be fairly sparing with this because when you go ahead and do your actual uh, rider, your curseur in this case, you want him to really be the focal point of the miniature. So I'm not going to do much blue here. Um, as well, as always I mentioned that I'm normally using Citadel paints for this, uh, but really the technique is more what's significant here. So if, if you've got you know Vallejo paints or Reaper or something that you prefer to use, uh, there are conversion charts out there for you know, what you'll find more accurate or more more to your taste for these Napoleonic figures. Okay, but again, really it's the technique we're looking at. Now comes the really fun and exciting part. <laughs> Get your black and start filling in all of the leather details. This will take a fair bit because there's a lot of straps, but on top of that you want to make sure you're not going to hit anything that you have already painted because having to go back over something at this stage would be... A right pain in the neck let's put it that way so I'm gonna go around now and fill in all of the leather with whatever black you choose to use I'm using my Vallejo black as always and uh, we'll come back and see what that looks like when that's done now what a difference that makes <laughs> he goes from looking messy and you know dirty and not very well finished to hey that's not too bad you know we're getting to the point where you put him on the table there's not much left to do to him really. I've also blacked in his hooves at the same time, but now I've just got a little bit of a dark metallic color. I'm going to use gunmetal for this and just do in a couple of the little metal details like his bit and bridle. And then we're going to finish off with the most important part of the horse, his mane and his tail. <laughs> so I've got here Rhinox hide because I want quite a, a dark brown to sort of fit with the tone I've got going so far. Uh, with the black horse, for example, I might use Eshin Grey, um, but it's really down to how you want your horse to look. Um, you know, real life reference photos are probably super handy here for what's going to be appropriate. But let's get on this Rhinox hide, and then we'll come back and we'll give him a light dry brush or something over the top just to bring out the detail and all of that, uh, all of that fluff. We're going to go down again to our cheap little dry brush. And I've got some Vermin Lord Hide that I'm just going to lightly bring out some of these details with. You don't need to go too far with this, but this will help break it apart from the horse, you know, his actual pelt itself. Uh, likewise, if you're doing, you know, the black horse, something like a grey would probably work well here. This helps if I actually have it on the camera <laughs> when I'm doing it. But as you see, it's just adding a little bit more warmth to that hair. And then with his base applied, we have our cavalry figure finished. Now you could go in and paint the eyes as well, uh, but I've seen before that if you, you spend a little bit too much white in there, you can make your horses look quite scared, you know, and that's not really what you want. So I've elected in this case to just not paint them. You could also go ahead, spend a bit of time highlighting the leather, but because there's so much of it and, you know, you're going to see these normally in units of sort of six to eight figures, I don't think it's going to add a huge amount, uh, a huge amount, if you're just going to be using them as wargaming figures. So for that reason, I've skipped it in this case. 
And like I mentioned, this is one where we're really looking more at just the horses themselves and how you can paint cavalry for your own force, whether it be Napoleonics, uh, something earlier, or something off in the far future, if you happen to still want Rough Riders in your Imperial Guard army. Yeah! But whatever the case, hopefully this was helpful to you somewhere. And, you know, like I said, this is really more about getting models on the table. So what I'm going to do, like I mentioned, this is going to be part one. Tomorrow we're going to tackle the black and the white horse, and we'll do the Curacao at the same time. So that's going to be more sort of specific to the French period. As ever, guys, if something was useful to you there, feel free to drop a comment in the old box below. Both my Twitter and Facebook are linked there too. And as ever, thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank <laughs> you.